someone was to start a medicinal mushroom garden in his little permaculture farm somewhere in the UK, which species would you um, recommend them to look into? Well, one, just get our a term straight here. Yeah. Number one, our assumption, uh, if a, a someone doing permaculture would start a medicinal mushroom garden or a mushroom yeah. garden, yeah. they're actually doing it already. Yeah. So the permaculture, permaculturists are growing mycelium, are growing all sorts of mycoflora, you know, in their environments. They're already seeing the advantageous species, like at Findhorn, we saw the big parasol mushroom, Mac Macrolepiota procera, coming up beautifully with the plants. Well, that's a great pairing right there. So the mushrooms that can be grown in, in companion cultivation uh, in the garden are many-fold. There's, you know, there's the hypsozygous species, the elm oysters, um, from the conference we were just at, I was quite surprised and delighted to see the Pleuritus pulmonarius, maybe an endophyte. Endophytes are fungi that grow in association with the plants, um, and they give a host defense resistance against insects and other diseases, including other fungi. What's and the name of this fungus again? The Pleuritus pulmonarius is one of them. But the amadou uh, mushroom, my hat is made from amadou, okay. the birch polypore, Fomis fomentarius, just this past four years ago. Uh, research came out that it is an endophyte protecting potentially birch trees and this mushroom only forms on dead birch trees but the fungus infuses the stems and the leaves of the birch tree preventing other quick to kill parasites from killing the birch tree but when the birch tree matures and dies for whatever reason then the fungus goes okay I've protected you my time to reproduce and then it produces this wood conch, a hard hoof and then this wood conch has antiviral properties. We do know that mm -hmm. it's active against the actually the the uh, I think it's called the variegated to, uh, tobacco virus is one of the first antivirals were found were found from the amadou mushroom. Um, and now we know it's active against other viruses and other bacteria and as, as well as protozoa. So our ancestors, I think, and especially women, it's just a fact of life is that. Men have testosterone, we go out and beat each other up and kill each other with swords a lot more than women do. I think most people would accept that. We come back to the camp, we're wounded, and women are there because of the children and nursing and all of that. And I think they were the great mycologists uh, of, of ancient time. They were, the, they were making the mushroom potions. They were boiling amadou to create, and it helps preserve meat, reduces bacteria, the fabric that can be made into clothing, and I could give that to you to prevent, you know, parasitic diseases from infecting your wounds. And I think there was a lot of this concept of the witch's brew. I think there was a, especially in Middle Europe, there was an enormous uh, knowledge base uh, around paganism and witches and and some of these acts were, were Christian witches, so it's not, not about Christianity here. It's about earth-based knowledge and n knowledge of natural systems, and that these medicinal mushrooms, and even the psychoactive mushrooms, are feared f uh, by many because they're so powerful and yet misunderstood. Back in time, I think we had a much greater knowledge, and I propose the hypothesis that the, the greatest mycologists, the greatest medicinal mushroom practitioners were probably guilds of women and uh, and then they would give the men what they needed but they were the collector of knowledge it seems natural to me they would be because we were foraging and bringing things back to the camp but the men men would go out get harmed the women would be protecting the family so it seems to me they'd be protecting the medicinal mushroom knowledge as well any other species you want to mention the turkey tail mushrooms which i've mentioned yeah. already turkey tail mushrooms hyper accumulate selenium Selenium will bind with mercuric ions, and mercury and selenium come together as a biomolecular unit that's totally non-toxic. So this was discovered by Dr. Erika in Japan, and he found something even very surprising. You can take turkey tail mycelium and kill it in an autoclave. It's dead mycelium. Powder up the mycelium, throw it into mercuric ions in water, and it'll precipitate and bind with the, with the mercury and the selenium will bind together. Selenium come from the mycelium, the mercury, uh, you know, from a mine or from pollution, and then it will make it into a totally non-toxic form. So there is one example of the binding of heavy metals uh, using these different mushroom mycelium. Directly after Chernobyl, there was a mushroom which we call in America the hideous gumphidius. Uh, David Aurora gets credit for that name, and, and this is a mycorrhizal species that grows in the roots of trees, but when the Ukrainian scientists went out 
into the downwind environments after Chernobyl, they were looking to see what foods were still edible because the Ukrainians had a long history of collecting wild mushrooms, wild foods. And they found this one mushroom, hyperaccumulated cesium 137, a heavy metal, radioactive metal from Chernobyl, mm -hmm. 10,000 times more than the background contamination. So it was able to hyper channel and decontaminate a large landscape from airfall, you know, of, of cesium, was able to up, up channel it and focus it into a mushroom. Now, the mushroom is radioactive, highly radioactive. The mushroom is dangerous to consume, but in doing so, the mycelial mat decontaminated a large area, guaranteed the plurality and biodiversity of the species within the ecosystem that then give rise to the trees and the foliage to create the debris fields that kept the ecosystem intact that allowed the gomphidias to grow. So there's yet another example. There's, there's dozens of examples against E. coli, against uh, nitrates, against um, all sorts of other pollutants coming from industry and farms and from livestocks you know, that we can, we can utilize. And they're all mentioned in your book. They're all mentioned yeah. in the book. I mean, it's a list that I could go on for hours yeah. with one example after another, after another, after another. But this is just the beginning. It's the proverbial, proverbial tip of the mycelial iceberg. We you know we're just the few candidates that we've seen and recognized today. It's just suggestions of how vast this library is out there.